Okay, on the tray here, I've got my tools, okay? And then I've got my project here that I've centered, uh, or re-centered for that matter, and then secured it with some clay here on four different spots. You can see that, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start using my tools to trim this in. One thing you gotta keep in mind is remember how thick the bottom of this is, because if you go through the bottom, you've pretty much made a flower pot. Um, there's not much you can really do to reattach um, pieces as you take it away. Uh, so that's one thing to kind of keep in mind as you're doing it. Just kind of have a mental picture of how thick that base is um, when you made it. Now you may not remember, but there's a couple ways we can use to kind of help figure out what we did and how we did that and that kind of thing. Um, right around here, you can see that I've got those lines um, that were created when I was re-centering it. Um, those we're gonna get rid of first, and then we're gonna flatten out the top, um, which is the bottom of our project, and then I'll show you how to do the, um, the foot, okay? All right, so we gotta get our wheel spinning. We wanna spin it at a pretty good speed, okay? I hold my tool just like I hold a pencil, okay? So that it's nice and I got a nice firm grip in it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and press on the side of my clay and I should see these nice little ribbons of clay coming off. Um, that's what we wanna see, all right? So that means that I'm getting a nice even pressure on it, all right? Whether the clay moves, goes balancing around or um, is uneven, I don't really care. I just wanna make sure that I hold my tool nice and steady um, because that's gonna create a nice round surface on my project, okay? And that's the main thing that we're looking for. So I'm gonna press that in a little bit, okay? And you can see that I'm actually doing a little bit of shaping. Some people call this turning on the wheel, much in the same way that they do um, uh, uh, work on a lathe with wood, um, where that spins and you can um, do some shaping that way. There is a little bit of you know that to it. You can do some shaping, but for the most part, you want to do the shaping while the clay is wet and it's spinning on the potter's wheel. This is just a you know an added little bonus that you get you know a little extra. So I'm going to go ahead and make the side of this kind of like a curved in shape. Give it that nice vase bottom or foot design on the outside. Okay, I can then use my rounded side okay, to make sure that the transition here is nice and smooth. So I've got a nice curved line in here versus that squared off side. Because everything else here is curved, I wanna have a nice curve there, okay? So I'm just gonna kinda of even this out, get rid of that little line there. Okay, and since this clay is a little bit soft, I can kind of smooth it with my finger. That's why you'll see me kind of just do like that every once in a while. All right, so let's go ahead and start working on the bottom, okay? The bottom, you can see it's got kind of a little bit of a bounce to it. It kind of comes up in a couple spots. We're gonna get rid of that, all right? We always start in the center. I press down just a little bit, and then what I'm trying to do is hold my tool as steady as possible, whether the clay gets higher or lower, doesn't matter. I want that to stay in one spot, okay? And what'll happen is, is you'll see that the tool will kind of bounce a little bit. It'll bounce up and down, up and down like this. And what's happening is, is the clay is a little bit higher in one spot. And what that does is that puts more pressure in that area or removes the higher spot, higher clay. Um, and therefore I can level this out and make it perfectly flat on the bottom. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it, okay? Um, when peop some people tend to do that, um, especially if your clay is a little bit on the soft side, which mine is, okay? Um, when it's a little bit softer, you can gouge into your clay really easily and it can cause um, deeper cuts than you want to do, all right? Um, so just kind of be aware of that. So I'm keeping this nice and steady. You also notice that every time after I do a pass, that's what it's called when we get to the end, I clean that off. Um, that clay that gets stuck on the top there will cause your project, your tool to bounce around and move around on you, um, which is not good um, because then you can have all kinds of stuff. You don't have control over your tool if that happens. So I'm just gonna go one more time. I think I got it pretty close. There we go. So that's a little bit flatter than it was before. So now that I've got this flat, all right, I'm ready to go ahead and start making the foot. And hopefully you can see that. 
So from the top, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a pass, but I'm gonna stop about a half inch from the outside edge. And I'm gonna repeat that so that I make an indentation in the center of my project. And what that will do is that will create the foot on the outer edge. We want the foot on the outer edge as far as we can get it because that way all the weight is centered or is placed as far as wide as we can. And because of that, it's gonna make it more stable. If this foot was really tiny and just in the little, you know, one inch center part of this, obviously it's gonna tip over really easily. So if we bring it out as wide as possible, it's gonna make it a little bit easier to stand up and not tip over. It'll just be more stable there, okay? Show you that in the next one.